you from Studio B, South African-born worship artist Jonathan Butler rocks to the rhythm of his hit song, Give It Up to God. We'll let you know the latest that's being done to try to solve the refugee crisis in the Middle East. Speaking of the Middle East, Brian Bush has another moment in the Holy Land, and we're thankful Pastor Mark Lance is here, even though he talks about not being thankful. That's more show than most can pack into 60 minutes, but folks, we're not most shows, we're the Harvest Show. <laughs> the Harvest Show with Stefan Radlett, Valerie Lowe, Chuck Freebie, and Brian Bush from Israel. The Harvest Show, where faith makes a world of difference. Hello and welcome to The Harvest Show. Hats off to Mr. Chuck Freebie, who uh, <laughs> had far more than one mouthful and uh, really executed that read flawlessly. Well, we got Good through job, it. That's, that's the main thing. That's, what, that's yeah. what a graduate degree at Notre Dame will get you. <laughs> when I grow up, I want to be just like you. <laughs> oh, no, no. You want to aspire far higher than that, let yeah. me tell you. And I see you're wearing the, uh, wearing the Santorum in memory of uh, <laughs> Rick. <laughs> Suspending his campaign yesterday, huh? Uh, wearing what I could find that was clean, yeah, you know. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, Rick Santorum bows out of the Republican race. Uh, probably more to come after we get yes. through New Hampshire, and yeah. uh, things continue to trickle on in the political spectrum. Yes, they do. They do. Uh, I believe there's a debate tonight between uh, uh, Secretary Clinton and Senator Sanders. Actually, it was last night. Oh, the last time it was a yeah, town hall. Yeah, it was hall. a town hall, and it was it was thought, quite interesting. I thought tonight's a debate, an actual oh, debate. Oh, wait a minute. Well, Up maybe I don't know something. I, I, yeah, I believe both are right. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, there <laughs> we go. Thank you for mediating, sir. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Sorry about that, but I did watch the town hall the last town hall night. Some, yeah. yeah, and I got a chance to see the real distinction between the two of them. What did you, what did um, you think it was, or what did you see oh, it today? Oh, I can tell you why I believe that there is this why a lot of young people are feeling the burn for Bernie Sanders. <laughs> uh -huh. um, you know, the way he articulates his message, and it really resonates with them. He, mm -hmm. he kind of, you know, he gave his position on raising taxes. You'll never convince me that raising my taxes is a good thing for me, right. but the way he mapped it out and mm -hmm. explained it, I could definitely <laughs> see how a lot of people would benefit if it happens that way. <clears throat> I mean, right. raising taxes and everything that all of the candidates want to do you know, it's predicated on something else. Assuming that everything goes well, uh, perfectly well, mm -hmm. that uh, both houses of Congress will give you the vote and right. all of that. And you can get things then done. Then you can yeah. get things done. And, yeah. But we all know what that's like. Yeah, yeah. You know, just from, you know, just from just watching. Just the way it, <laughs> Washington all, works. It works, Or right. doesn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was quite interesting. Yeah, I, I kind of, uh, I watched it as well. And um, uh, to me, um, Bernie Sanders seems very authentic. Yes, and his his absolutely. choices in life and his positions that he holds and the principles that he holds, uh, he, he has stood on and he has a track right. record of. He's not moving around in the wind. I don't agree with his philosophy or with his approach to governing at all, mm -hmm. but from a personality and character standpoint, yes. he seems to be quite authentic. And, uh, you know, whether it's Hillary Clinton or Donald Trump or, or, or uh, you know, whomever else, you know, uh, Chris Christie, Marco Rubio, Ted Cruz, whomever else, uh, they, they just seem so political, except for Trump. He just seems kind of nutty, but I'll leave that out there with our <laughs> audience to write emails about later on. But enough about that. We've got a good story today. Yeah, we do. It is Black History Month, mm -hmm. and it is nice to see that the founder of the AME Church, the African Methodist Episcopal Church, Richard Allen, who was the first bishop of that church, is being honored by the United States Postal Service with a postage stamp. And the Religion News Service put out a little press release on this as the stamp was uh, uh, featured in a ceremony on Tuesday in Philadelphia. And they had five very interesting facts, or at least facts that I found interesting and hope that you will too, about Richard Allen. Hmm. He founded the AME Church after the worship of blacks was restricted. He had been in uh, St. George's Methodist Episcopal Church and his friend, a clergyman, Absalom Jones, was praying on his knees, but because he was a black man, he was removed while praying on his knees. Hmm. So that's when he decided to start the AME Church. He aided in the conversion of his slave master. Uh, his, Stokely Sturgis was the Delaware man who owned Richard Allen at the time, and Allen convinced Sturgis to allow visiting Methodist preachers to hold services at his home, 
Well, Stokely Sturgis wound up being converted, and after Sturgis was converted and Allen had paid for his freedom, the former slave gave Stokely Sturgis 18 bushels of salt in consideration of the uncommon kind treatment of his master hmm. during his service. So what a generous man he was. He licensed a woman to preach. He was one of the first people mm -hmm. to do that. Uh, Jarena Lee of the Bethel AME Church was allowed to preach eight years after she first requested it. He was a very successful businessman. He did not need to depend on his congregation for support, which I can hear a lot of, <laughs> a lot of congregants out there yelling amen to that. Uh, Alan prospered enough as a blacksmith, shoemaker, and swimney cheap to buy several income properties. A swimney cheap? Uh, a chimney sweep. Oh, okay. Uh, did I say it? I probably could say I think we'll have it. to roll tape on that okay. one. <laughs> and uh, then he wound up pioneering a number of African-owned institutions. He was instrumental in founding the Free African Society. So wow. just wow. A, a tremendous figure a pioneering in character, black wow. history. Mm -hmm. and, and one that you, quite frankly, don't no, hear a don't. lot about. In the in the textbooks. No, we. I mean, that's the thing about Black History. A lot of people say, "Well, why do you have Black History Month?" This is that's one of the reasons you do have Black History Month, so you can hear about the contributions of mm. African Americans to this country. Um, just fascinating. Those are facts I did not know about. I mean, you you know about some of the more popular, um, right. you know, George Washington uh, Carver. Yes, yeah, <laughs> people like him. But this was just so fascinating. I have many friends who are a part of the AME Church. It's not unusual. It was not unusual in uh, slavery times for black churches. Black churches were birthed out of out of the need to be able to worship God because mm -hmm. they could not do it right. um, in a white congregation. Yeah. So just thanks so much for that story. I learned yeah. something today. So when, when does the stamp come out? The stamp came out on Tuesday. Oh, okay. And, uh, available now. So uh, an inspiring figure whose life and work uh, resonate profoundly in American history. It's the 39th stamp in the Black Heritage series. Uh, more than 40,000 people petitioned for its creation. The art for that stamp, mm. by the way, came from his portrait, Bishops of the AME Church, which is at the library collection in Philadelphia. And, Wonderful. you know, to license a woman or to, yeah, yes, ordain yes. a woman to preach, that was huge. There are women still wanting to preach today, you know, and their denomination that they're a part of won't allow it. I don't know that... Well, I'll just leave it alone. But I know that there are some <laughs> organizations are well, about to call your names, but I won't do that today. Yeah, so amazing, uh, amazing man of God, amazing character, a pioneer yes. in, in many respects. And my goodness, what a, what a, what a legacy uh, he Silly. has left. The AME Church is a massive, massive oh, worldwide organization. That's right. It's a huge organization. Millions of people around the world mm -hmm. associate with the AME Church. Uh, there's one in my mom's neighborhood. You, you, that's what you do. You just find them, and they were started as a result because they couldn't worship together, blacks and yes. whites. Yeah. We're not allowed to worship together, but thank God that is no longer the case. Amen to that. And we'd love for you to join the conversation today. You can like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter. Be sure to set your DVR to record the show so you can watch Harvest anytime. The international news with Chuck Freebie is coming up next. This Thursday, February 4th, 2016, here's what's happening in your world. Leaders and diplomats from 70 countries are currently meeting in London, pledging billions in funds to help millions of Syrians displaced by war and try to slow the chaotic exodus of refugees to Europe. This one-day meeting is being held under tight security near the British Parliament. It's aimed at gathering donations and agreeing on plans for economic and educational projects to help the four and a half million Syrians who have sought refuge in neighboring countries, including Jordan, Lebanon, and Turkey. Organizers are hoping to raise $9 billion in pledges this year. One of the delegates is seeking $500 million from the private sector. His hope is to educate refugee children. Well, we're campaigning to get one million Syrian kids back into school, out of the life jackets, out of potentially suicide vests and back into school uniform. And today we're raising money from the private sector but also from governments to give them what they want, which is an education. 
Fletcher, a former British ambassador to Lebanon, says the conference is a message the world has not given up on the Syrian people. Those donors and diplomats are already hearing from some of the refugees. Syrian refugee Mazun al Mahalan called on the conference to ensure her generation gets the education they need to build a peaceful Syria. If young people are not educated, who will rebuild the country? We need education because Syria needs us. Syria needs engineers and teachers and doctors and journalists. Without us, who will bring peace? Introduced by Nobel Prize winner Malala Yousafzai, Amalahan spoke on behalf of the displaced Syrian children on the importance of education for the future of her country. Amalahan and her family currently live in a refugee camp in Jordan. A funding shortfall last year forced the World Food Program, the UN agency responsible for feeding those refugees, to cut food assistance. Depending on how vulnerable they are considered, some refugees no longer receive any food aid. Some get half what they had received before, and the monthly cash assistance is reduced to $10 per person. Many families now try to survive on $40 of aid, plus whatever money they can get from selling their possessions. In 2015, the World Food Program says it gave food assistance to 1.8 million displaced Iraqis across that country, plus 60,000 Syrian refugees in northern Iraq. Services across Greece ground to a halt today as Greeks walked off the job in a massive general strike that canceled flights, ferries, and public transport, shut down schools, courts, and pharmacies, and left public hospitals with emergency staff. Unions called the strike to protest the pension reforms that are part of Greece's third international bailout. More than a dozen domestic flights were canceled. Farmers maintained their blockades of highways that have forced motorists into lengthy detours. The left-led government is trying to overhaul the country's ailing pension system by increasing Social Security contributions to avoid pension cuts. But critics say the reforms will lead many to lose two-thirds of their income to contributions and taxes. The general strike is the most significant the coalition government of Prime Minister Alexis Tsipras has faced since he came to power about a year ago. And while all this goes on, Revelers streamed onto the streets of Cologne, Germany today for the start of the city's annual street carnival. There is heightened security following an unprecedented series of robberies and sexual assaults, mostly targeting women at New Year. The five-day carnival kicks off with the traditional Weber Faschnacht festivities. That's a day when women symbolically take charge of the city. The number of police patrolling the streets has been doubled compared with last year to over 2,000. The New Year assaults prompted a nationwide uproar, the removal of Cologne's police chief, and a heated debate about integration at a time when Germany has seen huge numbers of refugees come into the country. Yes, I said Weber Faschnacht. Still to come, director Craig Shimahara talks about what it means to share his faith in a new full-length feature film. And when we come back, Brian Bush has today's Moments in the Holy Land. That's all when The Harvest Show continues after this. Got Facebook? Follow The Harvest Show. Comment and share your opinions on current events. Watch the most inspiring guest interviews right here. Watch my weekly video updates from Israel. Facebook.com slash The Harvest Show. Like us today. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Moments from the Holy Land. We are reminding ourselves this week that the Bible admonishes us to be Christ-like and are concluding our series on attributes of God that we can all share in. We first spoke on the attribute of encouragement. Then last time, we talked about helping the poor and needy. And today, we are going to speak on the so-called golden rule. Do to others what you would have them do to you. Now, I think we all know the Bible verse that talks about Jerusalem being a city compact together. 
And I've spent a fair amount of time in crowded places like New York City and Tokyo. And to me, Jerusalem just takes the cake when it comes to talking about people getting in the way. I think it's the clash of cultures mixed with pilgrims from all over the world. I don't know about you, but it gets to me sometimes when people are in the way. Are you like me? You get a list of things together to accomplish during the day, stuff you just gotta do, and you're running late and there's just call after call and email after email with this wall in front of you of people in the way. You know, here in Jerusalem's old city, interruptions are just normal. Traffic, road closures, checkpoints, it, it, it all just rubs you the wrong way, you know? Like that small pebble that's stuck in your shoe during a day-long hike. It starts off as an inconvenience, but by the end of the day, it's a major pain. Have you experienced a day like that as well? It can test one's holiness or Christ-likeness. It can make you feel very human. And the reality for us all is that the old fight or flight syndrome kicks in and it just makes you want to run away. Ultimately, once I get off the self-imposed pity train that I've put myself on and I regain some composure and perspective, my thoughts return back home. Colossians 3.23 reads, And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Yes, people get in the way, but that's the way it is. I agree, God did not make us to live on top of each other, but he did create us to live in community, not isolation. We are meant to rub shoulders with one another, to need each other, to work alongside one another. Whether we like it or even, even if we don't, we know that those people are around us for a purpose. People are communal. We share this earth with a few billion other individuals. So today we all travel together as fellow humans friends along this messy journey of life, of faith, and of sin, and redemption. And as we travel, may we all remember the truth of Scripture that many of us learned as a little child, that golden rule from Matthew chapter 7, verse 12. So in everything, do to others what you would have them do to you. So as I wrap up this week, I want to say thank you for joining me. I want to say thank you for the pleasure of coming into your homes from here in Jerusalem. And when you find yourself in types of situations that seem to get the best of you, please remember our moment together from here in the Holy Land this week and share an attribute of God with yourself, but also with those around you, that you would treat them the way you wish to be treated, and that you would remember the needs of the poor and the needy, and that you would be an encouragement. Bye-bye now. For 70 years, We've been using shortwave radio to reach many in developing countries with the gospel. We're so thankful for your support, which has helped continue the work Dr. Lester Summerall began. And through your gifts and prayers, we are excited to continue transmitting God's word by shortwave radio to every major continent in the world, sharing the good news of Jesus with those who simply can't be reached any other way. Do not be anxious about anything, 
but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. Again, I tell you that if two of you on earth agree about anything you ask for, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. Let us then approach the throne of grace with confidence, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Here at Prayer Line, we devote ourselves to prayer. 24 hours a day, we are on watch and thankful for every call that we receive. We see each caller not only as a prayer partner, but another opportunity to see God move and lives changed. If you have a need, please call us at 1-800-365-3732. In Uganda, thousands of children pour across the border, fleeing the terror and violence taking place in South Sudan. Many have nothing but the ragged clothes they wear. They're weak from hunger and struggle to survive. Today, you have an opportunity to change the life of one of these refugee children from Sudan. For just $72, you can provide food, comfort, and security for a child for an entire year. $144 will take away the pain of hunger and introduce two children to the joy of full life that comes from knowing the love of Jesus. Please call 1-877-769-9270 today or visit feedthehungry.org. Please act now. These children need your encouragement. They need to know they are not alone. Please call 1-877-769-9270 to help a child know how good a full life feels. You got the attitude, but most of all, you're hungry. How did it go this morning? They loved it. Marshall's all over the scheme. I want you to lead the whole team. What do you seek? I seek a meal. The old man told me to follow this path. Beneath the great tree, you will find the master. He will give you your fill. I'm my own master now. You've got to start paying attention. There's a whole world in there you're not seeing, man. You've seen it all, I guess. No disrespect, Father. But I kind of have. Are you sure? There is no other. I told you before, I left that life a long time ago. I'm going to do things my way. That tree does not exist. You are not my master. I know you. I know what do you hunger for. An ancient battle rages within each of us. The prize is our soul. Something is not right. Craig Shimahara has loved film ever since he walked out of a Star Wars matinee at seven years old. His latest project, Masterless, we just saw the trailer there, has received high praise at independent film festivals, including being named the best overall feature at the 2015 Fort Worth Indie Film Showcase. Good to have you with us today, Craig. Thanks, Stephanie. Appreciate and, uh, it. Let's get a little bit of your story, uh, because as a young, aspiring film producer and maker and fell falling in love with with the industry of film you went to UCLA mm -hmm. that's right <laughs> to study architecture right and your pathway of life kind of went not necessarily you know went in a great direction with yeah. architecture mm -hmm. but uh, what was it that kind of brought you back to I would say you know quote the first love of of wanting to communicate artistically through the medium of of uh, film. Yeah, absolutely. Well, first of all, Stefan and Valerie, I just want to thank you for the, the chance to, to, to be on the show. It's a real privilege. Uh, You're welcome. Um, but no, I've always loved film, as you mentioned, uh, seven years old, watching Star Wars. But um, uh, And being in Los Angeles, uh, the, the industry is pervasive. Film, filmmakers are everywhere. On my block where I live in Santa Monica, mm -hmm. um, there's just all kinds of 
producers and you know um, boom artists and things like that. But um, I've always known the power of film and how influential it can be. Mm -hmm. And I, I wanted to, to use it as a way to communicate uh, who I am as an artist. And, and uh, that would mean um, making sure that my faith was expressed in film. Mm -hmm. Architecture, I love architecture. My business is in architecture. But uh, the narrative, the way to e express a story is it's a little more esoteric, a little harder to read. Mm -hmm. And I've loved film, and it, it just seemed like a natural progression. Yeah. So what, what was it like then when you kind of had, not had to, but decided to make that kind of step of faith to, you know, go outside of, of, of your, your business and, and kind of start this, this project? Uh, because it's been a, a number of mm. years in the making. It's not an easy thing to do. No, it's, it's, it, it wasn't. It was a... It, it wasn't a distinct decision. It didn't feel that way anyway. It was, like I said, it was kind of a natural thing. It was uh, just something I've always loved. And, and um, I was talking to my wife, Lorraine, mm -hmm. who's, who's here. And um, she, said, she was surprised, but she said, Craig, if this is something that God has put on your heart, um, I think the, one of the ways you're going to have to do this is, is carve out some extra time for yourself. And that's when I started the business that I own and operate now. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I've structured it in a way that I can uh, try to give myself some latitude to, to yeah. pursue these things. So yeah. about 17 years ago, started doing some short films on the side and finally uh, did a feature. Only took 17 years. <laughs> <laughs> well, Craig, I hear today is your birthday, so happy birthday oh, to happy you. Birthday. Oh, happy birthday. Okay, you. so you're an architect and you managed to use your skills as an architect to create this film. Kind of give us the backstory because I noticed there it seems like the, the story takes place at a firm, an architectural firm. Right. You, so, uh, I mean, that's creative that you could use your actual real life skills to make a film. How do you do that though? Well, you, you write what you know. I'm sure you've heard that. Mm -hmm. And, and right, uh, I, didn't, right. I was just lazy. I didn't want to do any research on the pr protagonist's uh, profession. It was easy to, to write about the nuances of the profession having been in it. Mm -hmm. um, but my company, we actually don't practice architecture in the pure sense. We actually do digital graphics. Mm -hmm. So for, uh, the easiest way to explain it is that if there's like an empty plot of land for a building that will eventually um, be built, my company, we do the um, kind of the pre-visualization of that building mm -hmm. for marketing and right. uh, to, to, to basically sell the idea of the building. Correct. Mm -hmm. Correct. So I was able to use those skills uh, to do the um, visual effects for this film. Half of the film is done in, in the spirit world, if yes. you will, and we shot all of those scenes uh, on green screen. Wow. And so then mm -hmm. my company then filled in all of the kind of digital yeah. background. Tell us about the, uh, the story itself of Masterless. Uh, uh, just looking at the trailer and reading up a little bit about it, it uh, I mean, it's quite imaginative, uh, you know, having this cross-world, cross-cultural, cross-time mm. kind of uh, feel to it. Uh, what, what is uh, kind of the, the essence of, of the film? Well, it's about an architect uh, who uh, goes through kind of the, the normal uh, ups and downs of, of life. He, he's not a believer, mm -hmm. uh, his wife is, but when his wife uh, falls ill and he's laid off of work, he goes on this journey of faith. But what's unique about this film is that there's this kind of duality to it. There's uh, the spiritual side of him that's represented by this Ronin character or Master of the Samurai. And, um, you know, the main character whose name is Kane is an atheist and so his spirit, the Ronin, is kind of wandering. Mm -hmm. And once these kind of tragedies happen in his life, he goes on this journey of faith, exploring faith, and likewise the, the Ronin goes out and searches for the great tree. So there's some parallels there. Mm -hmm. And ultimately they... Um, fight their demons, and, and um, uh, there's a climactic battle at the end. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to ask you to do a spoiler alert and tell <laughs> who wins, but I mean, I'd imagine you, you talk about this character, Cain, being an atheist. Mm -hmm. Those are real life themes right. that a lot of people struggle with, you mm -hmm. know, believing, and is there a God, is there not a God? Right. So what's the takeaway in your mind for people who see this film? What do you want them to walk away with? Valerie, I'm so glad you asked that because that's the intent of the film. It was always meant to be a tool to reach those who are grappling with these larger questions. I, mm -hmm. I work in architecture in Los Angeles. I, I, a lot of my colleagues and friends, dear friends, are very cynical folks. Most of them, are, a lot of them are atheists. And they would never join me at church, but I was hoping that they might see a film where I, I could use as a bridge to, to, to engage in this kind of discussion. Mm -hmm. The takeaway would be that, um, that there is hope, uh, that, that there is a spirit, you know, would you consider that there is a spiritual side to our lives other than the material world that we see here 
consider it and if you would um, consider the hope of, of Christ and, and of, of our God. Mm. And you said it took you about 17 years to do this project, but it came to fruition at a perfect time where Christian, well not, because this film is not necessarily Christian, well, you share your faith, mm -hmm. it's about faith, mm -hmm. so yes, it does have this Christian under all, undertone to mm -hmm. it. But this is a great time for uh, people of faith to bring their films to the forefront because now it's more acceptable in Hollywood. Right, right. It, I've been working on projects for 17 years. This project took about six or seven. Okay. Um, and, uh, and you hit it on the head, I, I think, when you said that Hollywood is more open to these kind of films. But the, the Christian films that have been produced often speak to, often preach to the choir this film, the intent was always to try to reach those that aren't, that mm -hmm. don't necessarily live this life mm -hmm. and kind of, uh, you know, engage again in those kind of conversations to introduce them to it. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's, that was the goal. And yeah. where'd you get the idea for, for the film, for the storyline of, of these two worlds and, you know, well, the architect, we know where that mm -hmm. came from, mm -hmm. but uh, uh, the, the Ronin character mm -hmm. and, and, you know, how did, how did that all come together in your heart and in your mind? I've always loved C.S. Lewis as a kid, uh, and uh, the Chronicles of Narnia. I used to read them uh, as the elementary school, actually, in junior high. And um, the idea that these inner struggles that we all have can be illustrated on this figurative battlefield, mm -hmm. I've always been fascinated by. So I essentially, that was the template I was using. It, but I just, I just kind of changed the the battlefield. Mm -hmm. you know? okay. And and um, one of the things that you know. The, amount of time it took to bring this from conception to completion. You had several challenges and uh, almost, maybe they felt this way, insurmountable mm. obstacles in the way. So it was really a stretch of faith. And uh, I want to know, how did you personally grow uh, through this project itself? Obstacles? There are no obstacles in film. It's so easy. This, this, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, it, it did really stretch me. And, and grow. I, I like to say that um, nothing has grown my faith um, uh, other than my marriage, nothing has grown my faith more than this this project. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I mentioned I'm, I tend to be more of a cynical kind of person. Um, uh, I don't pray for parking spots, you know, <laughs> at, the, at the mall and things like that. But um, you know, <laughs> should you have whole milk or two percent? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But just going through this project and, and overcoming the obstacles, um, it really kind of brought me back to more of a, a childlike faith in that mm. I was able to see God provide in, in ways that I couldn't deny it. It, it had to be, you know, God's hand. Mm -hmm. uh, Talk about the cast. Mm. I, I recognize one of those faces yeah. in, in the film. Talk about the cast. Oh, uh, yeah, Adam Vornia starred. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, he, he has that dual role. He plays both Kane, Madison, and the, uh, and the Ronin. Um, and uh, we were very fortunate to pick him up. He, he, uh, he was in a show called Seventh Heaven, Mm -hmm. uh, from many years ago, yeah. and uh, I was a regular on that show, and just a joy to work with. Uh, he, he's a, he happens to be, be a believer as well, and uh, it was neat to, I, we're, we're now close friends, and it was neat to see how he revealed to me that this role kind of paralleled his own personal life, mm -hmm. you know, and his ups and downs with his faith, wow. so that was neat. Yeah. yeah, so it really spoke to him to be able to play that role, mm. and he could do it authentically as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Craig, so glad to have you with us today. Uh, Masterless was just released a couple days ago. Mm -hmm. It's available, you said, on, on Amazon, uh, available in Walmart. Mm -hmm. uh, also, did you say Net Netflix? Netflix, uh, yeah. yeah. I wasn't going to say it. I <laughs> yeah, you say iTunes. It? Okay. Uh, you can go to the website, uh, um, Masterless. masterlessfilm.com. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, thank you for being with us today here on The Harvest Show. I encourage our friends, our viewers right now, as you're watching, to connect with Craig. You can go to masterlessfilm.com. Or as always, you can go to our website, harvest-tv.com. We'll link you back to his site as well. And uh, the film's out since Tuesday. You can pick up your copy at a variety of distribution outlets. Coming up later, we're going to hear from singer Jonathan Butler as he performs Give It Up to God. But next, Pastor Mark Lance with today's Connections. We'll be right back. The number one question that most people ask is how they can be sure they won't outlive their money in retirement. Good question. One way is to set up a source of fixed income that's safe and secured for your lifetime. That's what a charitable gift annuity does for you. Call for a free, personal, customized illustration of how a charitable gift annuity can provide lifetime income that never changes. Call now, won't you? 
Do you sometimes wonder what life would be like if you had the energy to do those extra things you want to do but just can't? Maybe it's to go for a walk after dinner or spend your Saturdays playing with your kids. If you're tired all the time and have decided that you just always will be, guess what? You don't have to be. With Mineral Concentrate from Making Healthy Choices, this fulvic acid electrolyte mineral formula promotes maximum cell function while sparking your body's electrical conductivity. What does that mean? Well, most people say they've never felt Felt better. The best part is it's only $29.95. And if you call now, we'll even pay to ship it to you. So dial 1-800-965-2345 or go to mhclife.com. This electrolyte formula promotes dependable, solid energy day in and day out. So call the number on the screen. Do it for your spouse, your kids, your friends, and most of all, do it for you. Call 1-800-965-2345 or go to mhclife.com. It's time for life. Dr. Lester Sumrall was given a global vision to reach a million souls every day for Jesus Christ. To fulfill his God-given assignment, he began establishing the many outreaches of Lassie Broadcasting. Today, the ministry reaches millions of people in more than 190 nations through the power of television, radio, free Bibles, shortwave satellite, and prayer line. But we need your help to reach millions more. Will you join Partners in Faith and help us spread the gospel around the world? Will you commit to giving a monthly gift of $25, $50, $100 or more. Dr. Sumrall knew he couldn't fulfill his vision without the help of thousands of partners. But don't wait. Become a partner in faith today. Call 1-800-365-3732 or visit Lassie.com to give safe and secure online. The Bible says he who wins souls is wise. Make the wise choice today to become a partner in faith and help us win souls for Jesus. talk to you today about something extremely important and it's the sin of ingratitude. You know, we are privileged to live in one of the most blessed and prosperous nations in the world. We're privileged to live in, I believe, one of the most blessed and prosperous seasons and times in the history of the world. There's more opportunity for people to succeed now than at any other period of history. Yet in the middle of this prosperous and blessed place and period, we still see people being so ungrateful, so unthankful. Take a casual stroll through the coffee shop and you're going to hear people complaining about the economy, complaining about the election results, complaining about the state of our world. You can eavesdrop in the lobby of the church on Sunday morning and you're probably going to hear people criticize somebody else in the church or maybe complain about some aspect of the service not measuring up to their level of expectation. You can read the blogs, you can read the RSS feeds over the internet and you are going to find people exploding with dislike over the condition of our world. You know, here we are in the midst of what should be the greatest of times, but yet we see people plagued with such a spirit of ingratitude. And it's really easy to find the answer to that unfortunate question of why. Because the Bible said ingratitude, unthankfulness, is a sign that we're living in the end times. Jesus is coming soon. And I believe ingratitude is one of the earmarks that his coming is just around the corner. I say that because the Apostle Paul wrote to us in 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 1. Look at what he said. This know also that in the last days perilous times will come. Men will be lovers of their own selves. They'll be covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents. And here we go, unthankful, unholy. You see, it's not by accident that unthankful is listed right next to unholy. The more that sin abounds in this world, the more ungrateful people will become. They are of one and the self-same spirit. Now, that's a bold statement to make. Yet, if we are to be accurate, then we've got to conclude that if being covetous is a sin, well, then so is being unthankful. If boasting, being proud is a sin, well, then so is being unthankful. It's in the same verse. If blaspheming God is a sin, well, then so is being unthankful. We've got to be careful so we are not guilty of committing the sin of being unthankful. Now, how do you know if you're unthankful? Well, just listen to yourself talk for a short time. You're going to discover that the true attitude of your heart is really revealed by the words that you speak. 
Jesus told us this in Luke chapter 6 and verse 45. He said, a good man out of the good treasure of his heart, well, he brings forth that which is good. But an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart, he brings forth that which is evil. Here's the reason. Out of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaks. So friend, let me ask you, are you critical of people when they don't measure up to your level of expectation? Are you complaining about the conditions of your life or do you tend to see the negative in every person or the negative in every situation rather than the positive? Do you find that people are avoiding being around you because they know that you're going to dampen the enthusiasm of the day? You see, these are symptoms that you've fallen into the spirit of unthankfulness. And I encourage you today, I want you to take a serious look at your heart. Take a serious look at your mind. See if you have become an ungrateful person. First of all, thankful people are happy people. You see, when you begin to be thankful, you bring a smile, not only to your face, but you bring a smile to the face of those around you. I love how the psalmist put this in Psalm 89 and 15. He said, blessed, happy is the people that know the joyful sound. They will walk, O Lord, in the light of thy countenance. Thankful people are happy people. Secondly, thankful people are also healthy people. When you are emotionally healthy, you're going to be more physically healthy. The writer of Proverbs said in the third chapter, verse 7, he said, Be not wise in your own eyes. He said, Fear the Lord, depart from evil, and it will be health to your navel. It will be marrow to thy, to thy bones. You will be stronger physically when you are thankful. And finally, thankful people are holy people. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 18 said, Everything, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. You see, when we walk in obedience to the commands of God, we walk in the will of God, we're walking in His holiness. And gratitude is a choice that will change your life. It'll make you a better person. And today, I want you to take a moment, say thank you. Say thank you to God. Say thank you to someone else. And I guarantee not only will it change your, your day, it's going to change your life. Be grateful, see health, happiness, and holiness come into your life today. A reminder, there are four ways to contact us here at Lucy Broadcasting. If you have something that you want to pray about, perhaps something that Pastor Mark just brought up, something that's on your heart, we encourage you to give us a call. 1-800-365-3732 is that number. If you're outside the United States, use your international code and dial 574-291-1010. You can always email your prayer request at prayerlc.com or snail mail them to 61300 Ironwood Road, South Bend, Indiana, 46614. When they come in, the gentleman on my left and his staff will take a look at them. Pastor Charles, a number of prayer requests coming in. Uh, what seems to be the hot topic these days? Huh. I tell you what, it's all over the board. Sure. Like there's, there's, well, you know, sometimes I would say, well, there's nothing really hot, but really, actually, everything mm -hmm. is hot because the enemy is attacking different ones from different areas and from different angles. And so we just got to be wise in today's time, and we got to understand that this is indeed the end times. Well, let's look at some of those prayer requests that have come in. Yeah, we're talking mostly healing and deliverance now, which is something that we do, and we do get praise reports about it. For instance, Marla in Indiana, Marla says, I'm calling you today because I've called you before with great success. She said, I need your prayer of agreement that the Lord will walk me through a healing process. She says, my son committed suicide yesterday, mm. and I never saw it coming. Mm, God yeah. bless her. And then Sharon in Illinois, you know, and we go right to the next prayer request, right. Chuck, but, you know, by no means... Uh, do we take that lightly? You know, right. the child Absolutely. committed suicide, you know. But we have Sharon in, in Illinois. Sharon says, I am standing in the gap for my nephew who has been diagnosed with cancer. She says, please agree with me that he will be healed and really get closer to God the Father. And then we have Lynn out in Pennsylvania. Lynn says, please pray with me for deliverance. My mom passed last January. And I have suffered from depression since. And she says, the doctor prescribed meds for me, and they gave me problems. Mm -hmm. And then finally, we have Titus in Arizona. Titus says, uh, my wife, Tony, 
was told during a doctor's visit that there is a mass around her kidney. Please agree with me in prayer that God will heal her and make her whole. There are some heavy hearts out there, a lot yeah. of people that need your prayers. We also Absolutely. encourage you to pray for our prayer line volunteers oh, because can you imagine being in this room and these calls keep coming in and, and their faith needs to be bolstered as well. So Absolutely. please, as you pray, not only for these people, pray for our prayer line volunteers, but yeah. Pastor Charles, won't you lead us in prayer today? Sure. Father in heaven, we just thank you today, Lord God, for what you're about to do. We realize that you've heard these requests, Lord, but more importantly, you're already on the move. Father, you told us in your word that before we even ask, you've already answered our request. And today, Father, we're asking for healing and deliverance for those ones who are calling and writing and emailing us here at Prayer Line. And Father, we ask that you would move and move with your power in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Amen. Now, because of our faith in the Lord, we have hope in the Lord, and we know that if we go to the Lord, he will take care of us. And Jonathan Butler reminds us of this as he performs in Studio B and gives us this great advice to give it up to God. Keep it up. 
the sick, mend broken relationships, reach the lost with the love of Christ. Do all of that and more when you support LaCie Broadcasting Prayer Line. Prayer Line is a channel of God's love, reaching more than 10,000 people every month. Your gift today will help keep Prayer Line available for free 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Go to your phones right now and call 1-800-365-3732. Give now and keep Prayer Line going strong. To have what scripture says is given by inspiration of God is a real treasure. And that's why we want to invite you to sign up for the treasury of Dr. Lester Sumrall. This free daily e-devotional draws from Dr. Sumrall's timeless writings and biblical insight on many issues confronting us today. Just go to lacy.com and click on the treasury sign up banner to receive the treasury of Dr. Lester Sumrall in your inbox every day. That's l-e-s-e-a.com. Dr. Lester Summerall dreamed of bringing the message of God's love and mercy to every nation of the world. Daily, Lissy Broadcasting is fulfilling his vision to reach a million souls for Jesus Christ. Every day, we step out by faith to pay the cost, to obey the great commission of Jesus Christ, to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. But we can't do it without you our partners. Will you consider becoming a partner in faith with Lissy Broadcasting by stepping out in faith to give a $25 monthly gift to keep reaching the lost, last, and the least of the world? As a partner in faith, you'll be changing lives every day for Jesus Christ. Call us today at 1-800-365-3732 or go online to partnerinfaith.com. We have some amazing resources to give you when you join. And on behalf of all the lives you'll be changing, thank you. The eyes of the world focus on Jerusalem, and the world press critiques its every move. Christian believers seek to come to the city to walk where Jesus walked. I'm Brian Bush, and I live in Jerusalem's old city, reporting three times a week on The Harvest Show. Think of me as your eyes and ears. Join me as we look at things in the Middle East from a Christian perspective on The Harvest Show on this Lassie Broadcasting Channel. The International Prayer Line here at Lassie Broadcasting is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We're here to pray with you, to agree with you that God would answer your prayers. But you know what? It takes money to continue running the prayer line. I know it's a 1-800 number, but we still have to pay the bills. And for a gift of any amount, we'll send you this amazing resource by Dr. Lester Summerall, Secrets to Answered Prayer. That's what it's called, Secrets to Answered Prayer by our late founder. This is one of the hallmarks of his message, his messaging, I should say, prayer and deliverance. And we know that God is a prayer answering God, but we will never know that if we never attempt to seek his face. So if you'd like to support the ministry of Lacy Broadcasting to see us, to help us continue to reach the untold billions through prayer, we need your help. That number is 1-800-365-3732. And as I've said many times before, 10 to 12,000 callers call into prayer line. I'm just, you know, just blows my mind to see <laughs> that we have volunteers who are standing by, Chuck, so dedicated to answering prayer requests from around the world and especially here in the United States. And we 
the prayer requests run the gamut from, you know, people wanting healing from right. cancer to kids calling in saying, I can't find my shoes. Would you pray <laughs> for me so that I can remember where I left my shoes? I, I remember doing that a couple of times, asking God to help me tie my shoes, shoestrings, when I was a little girl. Mm. So prayer really does work. Suck. <laughs> well, and not only does prayer work, but it's good to get advice about prayer. And certainly, mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Summerall, a man so driven by faith and prayer, he's a good one to listen to. So I want to give you a little excerpt from this book to kind of give you an inclination of what's in it. And Dr. Summerall writes, No matter how much you think you have to say to God, who is the creator of the universe, it's never as important as what He would say to you. Prayer has two sides to it, your side and God's. If you have something to say to him, say it and listen. Mm. Mm. If you come before him to praise him, do so and become quiet before him. If you sense his desire to speak to you, come before him and listen. If in your praying you develop the ability to listen to God, you will be richer for it. I have known persons of great power to become quiet before the Lord for long minutes at a time. And their prayers are not in words, but in our inarticulate groans of great intensity, they were not really speaking, they were listening, and they were learning mm -hmm. from God. What good. wonderful advice wow. from good, Dr. Good, Summerall. Good. And something that we can all take to the table today. Yes, it's important to bring our pleas and petitions before God, but you know what? He already knows them. Do you know what God is saying to you? If you want to hear it, then you have to be quiet and listen. See you tomorrow on Harvest. In the last 15 years, friends like you have helped send over 700,000 Bibles to anyone who requests a copy through our Spread the Word ministry. God has certainly been working powerfully through your support. The Book of Romans says, How beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. That's why we're so thankful for your partnership to help us take the best news of all time to more of those who are desperate to hear it. It costs just $5 to send a Bible to someone hungry to read it in Africa, South America, or many other places around the globe. Through your generosity, many thousands have already read about the saving grace of Jesus Christ. And with your support, we look forward to helping fulfill Dr. Lester Somrall's vision of reaching the untold billions yet untold with the gospel. Today is your day. This is your moment. Life is calling. It's time to get back that extra spark that you've been missing, and it's simple with Mineral Concentrate, an all-natural trace mineral product designed to promote energy and focus without sugar nor caffeine. Call 1-800-965-2345 or log on to mhclife.com. Today is your day. It's time for life. The Harvest Show is produced by LaCie Broadcasting and is viewer supported by people just like you. Thank you for inviting us into your home today.